The National Broadcasting Company will interrupt all its programs to bring you the latest bulletins. Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you the Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. For the right start these war-busy days, food experts advise that you eat a hearty, hot breakfast. Now, one of the most satisfying breakfast treats we can think of is hot toast or hot rolls and muffins spread with delicious parquet margarine. Here truly is an appetizing way to start your day, and a good way to perk up your energy, too. Parquet margarine, you see, is one of the best energy foods you can eat. And to make parquet margarine even more nourishing, Kraft adds 9,000 units of important vitamin A to every pound of this delicious spread for bread. Remember, parquet margarine now requires only two ration points a pound, and it's downright inexpensive, too. So add parquet margarine's flavor goodness to every meal you serve. Tomorrow, ask your dealer for delicious, nourishing parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Yes, Kraft makes parquet. Take you now to Summerfield. Go ahead, Summerfield. This is Summerfield. With the primary elections only four days off, political rivalry here has reached its peak. Mayor Terwilliger and his opponent, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, have been slugging it out toe to toe in a series of political debates all over town. That's the way it's been all day, folks, and here's the kind of debating that's been going on. And that's why I say to you, my friends, taxes must be reduced and reduced immediately. Because if taxes are not reduced, what is there going to be left for any of us? Uh, You're forgetting something, Mayor. What? The moon belongs to everyone. The best things in life are free. That is no answer. The stars can shine for everyone. They gleam there That for is you. unworthy and undignified. I challenge my opponent to put down his ukulele and give the taxpayers of this town a straightforward answer on the question of school appropriation. Ukulele. Why does Gildersleeve insist that we should spend more money on the school? Mayor, I can answer that in two words. What are they? School days, school days, Ah. dear old golden rule days. Louder reading and writing and arithmetic. I want to... Talk to the tune of the hick. Oh, go chase yourselves, all of you. Mayor, what kind of talk is that? Go ahead, go ahead, vote for Gildersleeve. It'll save your right. Temper, temper. I wrote on your slate, I love you, Terwilliger, when we were a couple of kids. Congratulations, Commissioner. You really had him on the ropes, sir. Well, I guess I got his goat a little, friend. Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm just going to vote for you every chance I get. Oh, thank you, madam. Well, let's be getting along, Leroy, shall we? Uh, do you really think you're going to get elected? I don't know who stands a better chance, my boy. Why? Why do you ask? Well, I ran into a lady today, and she said she wouldn't vote for you unless she knew which party you belonged to. Well, did you tell her? How could I? I don't know myself. Leroy, you mean to tell me you don't know what party your own uncle is affiliated with? No. Do you? Certainly. I'm a candidate for nomination on the Progressive Fusion ticket. I thought that's what Mayor Terwilliger was. He is. How come? I thought Terwilliger was no good. He isn't. But you're both what you said. Progressive fusionist, yes. Only the mayor is a reactionary progressive. That's why I'm opposing him. I don't get it. You see, my boy, the election next Tuesday is just a primary election. What's that? Well, that's to decide which of us is to be the party's candidate for mayor in the fall. The man the progressive fusionists nominate in June will run against the independent progressives in November. Independent progressives? Who are they? That's the other party here in Summerfield. No good, huh? No good. Too radical, my boy. They don't amount to much anyway. If I get the nomination in June, I'm as good as elected. Unc, 
Yes? Whatever became of the Republicans and the Democrats? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Leroy. Funny about them. Back about 1932, the Republicans in Summerfield sort of went underground for a while. And in the meantime, the Democrats got to fighting among themselves, and they split up into the progressive fusionists and the independent progressives. So then the Republicans came out and took sides, and there you are. Is that clear? Clear as mud. All I know is I'm for you. <laughs> well, don't worry about it, my boy. By fall, your uncle will be mayor. And the chances are you'll have a new aunt, too. I say the chances are you'll have a new aunt, too. Unc. Yes? How far can you throw this rock? Oh, far can I... Go home, Leroy. Go on, run along. I got to stop in here at headquarters. Well, hello, Judge. Lloyd. Hi, Commissioner. Well, how'd it go, Gildy? Gentlemen, you're now standing in the presence of the next mayor of Summerfield. How do you know? Oh, Judge, it was a slaughter. I mowed him down. I only wish Eve had been there. She'd have married me on the spot. Say, Commissioner, you really going through with it this time? Yeah, going through with what? What kind of a question is that? If you're referring to my forthcoming marriage... Oh, no offense, Commissioner, no offense. I just meant... Well, as long as you know what you're doing... Yeah, of course I know what I'm doing. Well, I just meant... Well, I remember when you were engaged to that other party last year, that, that Southern party. Miss Goodwin is not a party, Floyd. <laughs> She's my fiance, and a very lovely lady, isn't she, Judge? She is indeed. And she has a very lovely mother, too, hasn't she, Gildy? I like her mother. Of course you do. When's she leaving town, Gildy? Just as soon as I can get her reservations. <laughs> and that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Judge. If you're my campaign manager, you're supposed to be in charge of arrangements. Now, Gildy, reservations are hard to get without priorities. Well, there ought to be a priorities on mother-in-laws. <laughs> But I like her, you understand. <laughs> Say, you know, I might be in a position to help you out there, Commissioner. Oh? You think you could get a reservations? Well, I know the man that could. Al Bergman down at the depot. I did him a favor once by keeping my mouth shut. Floyd, if you could take care of this for me, I'd be your friend for life. Could you call him up now? Well, I'd like to do you the favor, Commissioner. Only remember it was me that did it. Oh, Floyd, you're a pal. I don't know how many people would go to that much trouble for a friend. Do you, Judge? You're darn right you don't. I only hope I can do as much for Floyd someday. Depot? Is Al there? Oh, this is Floyd, Al. Floyd Munson. Yeah. How you been, Al? Tell him I'd like to get a lower on the 619 tomorrow night. That's good. How's the wife? Tell him if he hasn't got a lower, an upper will do. That's good. Say, Al, I got a friend here. He'd like to get reservations on the 619 tomorrow. Oh, it is, huh? Oh, that's too bad. No chance, then, huh? Uh, fine fixer you are, Floyd. Uh, by the way, Al, we ought to get together one of these nights. I ain't seen you lately. Remember that time you told your wife you were going to the lodge meeting? <laughs> Boy, did we have a time that night. <laughs> oh, you don't need to worry, Al. There's nobody here, and I wouldn't tell anybody. You know that. My wife. Well, she'd run right over and tell your wife. That was really an evening, wasn't it? Remember when the cop came in, you and the hostess hid behind the jute box? <laughs> <laughs> Say, Al, seriously, about those reservations. My friend here, you do? Oh, that'd be great. Call me back, will you? And uh, Al, remember me to the wife. <laughs> well, it's all fixed, Commissioner. He's going to call me back. Lloyd, that's wonderful. How did you do it? Well, this guy's a friend of mine. Oh, well, I don't know how to thank you. Bye, George Floyd. Yeah? Next time I come in for a haircut. Remind me to get a shampoo and a massage. Oh, Commissioner. Uh, yes, Floyd? Remember me to your girlfriend. I'll do that, Floyd. <laughs> she. Six thirty. She must be home. Look who's here. Oh, dear, Throckmorton, come in. Uh, Mother, the stove, something's boiling over. I can't stay, Eve, don't worry. Oh, I'm sorry, I was just getting supper. Can't stay but a minute. Just drop by to tell you I've got some wonderful news. Oh, really, what is it? Guess. Oh, I can't guess, Throckmorton, tell me. Go ahead, make one guess. Wait, you haven't done something foolish, darling. 
You didn't go and buy those earrings just because I happened to admire them. Uh, uh, no, nothing foolish, Eve. <laughs> uh, guess again. Oh, I can't. Go on, try. Throckmorton, I have a cake in the oven. If you have something to tell me, oh, I Oh, forget to... the cake, Eve. Listen, I finally did it. I got your mother reservations. She leaves town tomorrow night on the 619, rain or shine. Well, I must say you seem awfully happy about it. Uh, but, oh, why shouldn't I? I've been working on it for a week. I mean... <laughs> well, gosh, Eve, your mother's the one who said she had to go. You asked me yourself to get her the tickets. I mean... Uh, gosh, I'd like to have her stay longer. I wish she could. So do I. I'd like to have her stay here forever, but she's got to go. She's got to go, Eve. <laughs> Let's make the best of it. That's my attitude. Oh, you're right, dear. I'm sorry. After all, we must think of her. We mustn't let our pleasure stand in her way. You're right. We must think of Fred, too. By the way, I ought to wire him. Uh, Fred? My brother back home. Mother lives with him, you know. Oh, good old Fred. By George, I've always wanted to meet Fred. I'll bet he's a great guy. He is. He's Mother's favorite son. Of course, he's her only son, but he's always been her favorite. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what does he do for a living, or does he... Oh, yes, yes, he's an engineer. Oh, engineer. Great profession, engineering. Noble profession. Building things. Is he married? No, he's a bachelor. So Mother keeps house for him. Fine, fine. Ideal. Well, I've never felt that Fred thought so. Hmm? What do you mean? Well, I've always felt that he was a little unhappy somehow. With your mother to take care of him? Why, how could that be? What more could he ask? Well, I think he's always regretted that somehow the right girls never come along. Lissa. Mother says he seemed rather restless lately. That's one reason she came here on this visit. Fred thought maybe the change would do her good. He, Lissa, a man's best girl is his mother. You tell him that. You tell him to hold on to her. Tell him I said so, Eve. You better wire him. You better wire him right now. Oh, but darling, why... why don't worry. I'll get the tickets, and I'll get them over here as fast as I can. But, Doc Morton, we Eve, don't know... wire what... Fred. Tell him not to worry. Tell him we'll ship her off to him in good shape tomorrow. Tell him that Mother is on the way. The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few moments. If you're serving lighter summertime meals, remember that every meal your family eats should be nourishing and well-balanced. So along with salads and other warm-weather treats, serve crackers or bread spread with delicious parquet margarine. You see, parquet margarine is a wonderful aid to good summertime nutrition. It's so nourishing, so satisfying. First, there's that delicate, appetizing parquet flavor, important to good nutrition, because parquet margarine makes other foods taste so good. Adds real flavor goodness to toast, Rolls, muffins, and waffles. Then there's that marvelous food energy parquet margarine provides, so economically. And last, there's the important vitamin A that Kraft adds to parquet margarine. Never less than 9,000 units in every pound. So make parquet one of your family's standbys for good summertime nutrition. P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine. Tomorrow, buy parquet, the spread that's made by Kraft. <laughs> Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. It's breakfast time, but so far only Marjorie and Leroy have reached the dining room. Marjorie is reading the front page of the paper. Leroy is reading the comics, while Bertie can be heard in the kitchen. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Gee, you feel good this morning, don't you, Bertie? I sure do, Miss Marjorie. Well, I do, too. It is a beautiful day. Great day for the race. What race, Leroy? The human race. <laughs> Oh, you sure fit on that one. <laughs> oh, that joke's so old, I forgot it. Your uncle coming down soon? Oh, yes, we can wait for him. He was singing in the bathtub a few minutes ago. <laughs> he must feel good, too. Why shouldn't he feel good? The election is in the bag. Oh, that has nothing to do with it. And what's he singing about? When your heart goes bumpity bump, it's love, love, love. Oh, for corn's <laughs> sake. Girls always think everything is love. Well, it is, too. Isn't it, Bertie? If you're in love, it is. Well, I wish you'd get married and get over us. <laughs> what? Well, I mean it, a little 
it'll be great when they're married. How come you think so, Leroy? Well, if my aunt is principal of the school, can you see those teachers pushing me around? <laughs> <laughs> well, I like her because she's nice. You like Miss Goodwin, don't you, Bertie? Well, if Mr. Gilsey likes her, I like her. One nice thing about her, she don't know nothing about cooking. And that'll save a lot of wear and tear on my personality. <laughs> well, good morning, good morning. And a special good morning to you, Bertie. Why a special one for me, Mr. Gilsey? Because you're the only member of my household that's able to vote on Tuesday. You're uh, 21, aren't you, Bertie? Yes, sir, I'm 21, going on 34. <laughs> Well, are you registered? Been registered ever since I've been in Summerfield. Fine, Bertie. I uh, won't attempt to influence your vote, but you can have all day Tuesday off. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, sir. In the meantime, would you like a little breakfast? I would indeed, Bertie. I've got to make a phone call, though. Bring it right in. Yes, sir. You seem to feel pretty good this morning, Unc. Never felt better in my life. That's because you're in love. (laughs) Well, that may have something to do with it. The fact is, I... Hello? Hello? Hello, Floyd. Gildersleeve. Any news for me? He's got him? All right, when do I get him? I don't care how sure you are, I want to see him. Fine, Floyd. I'll pick him up at the barbershop in a couple of hours. So long. <sighs> By George, if I wasn't going to have breakfast, I think I'd go upstairs and take another bath. <laughs> for goodness sake, why? Because now I've really got something to sing about. <laughs> Seventy-five, eighty-five, uh, one dollar. Thank you, Miss Ransom. Oh, you're welcome, Mr. Peavy. Uh, can I serve you in any other way? No, no, that's all. I was uh, just wondering, do you see much of Mr. Gildersleeve these days? Oh, yes, he comes in every now and then to pass the time of day or to have a soda. Oh, does he um, have as many sodas as he used to? I wonder if there's any question of professional ethics involved here. (laughs) Professional ethics? I was just thinking out loud, Mrs. Ransom. I I don't like to violate the confidence of a customer. Oh, you man. I'm just asking about Throckmorton as an old friend. You know that, Mr. Peavy. After all, I was engaged to marry him once. Of course. Well, I... I think I can safely tell you that he has definitely cut down on his soda. Oh, the poor man. I knew she'd be making him take off some flesh. She? (laughs) Oh, oh, yes, yes. Oh, that worries me, Mr. Peavy. Some men have to be fat to be healthy. Yes. (laughs) But I I think Mr. Gildersleeve overdoes it. Tell me, I understand his um, mother-in-law's in town. I mean, Miss Goodwin's mother. Have you met her? Well, yes, they've been in once or twice. Oh. Uh, just small purchases, but we chatted quite a bit. What do you think of her? What do I think of her? A very pleasant woman. <laughs> I know, but what do you really think of her? <laughs> you uh, want my frank opinion? Yes. A very pleasant woman. <laughs> reason I ask is I'm curious to know what Eve Goodwin... Oh, hello, Throckmorton. Oh, hello, Leela. Hello, Peavy. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you today? Oh, I'm in a spending mood, Peavy. Want a box of candy, some magazines, some... Uh, you haven't got any flowers. Well, what's come over you, Throckmorton? Don't tell me Eve's having another birthday. Now, Leela, it just happens these gifts are for Eve's mother. Oh, it's her birthday. No, it's not her birthday. Are you in the doghouse, Throckmorton? (laughs) Certainly not. And I wish you wouldn't use that expression in speaking of Mrs. Goodwin. She's a very fine woman, isn't she, Peavy? A very pleasant woman, yes, she is. (laughs) I'm very fond of her. Oh, it makes me awfully happy to hear that, Throckmorton, because, you know, in 20 years, Eve will be just like her mother. Uh, The reason I'm buying her mother these few little things is because she's going back home. Oh, I see. Well, it's so nice that you're so fond of your mother-in-law, Throckmorton. It's quite unusual. Oh, this whole mother-in-law business is just a myth anyway. Nothing in it. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, all I know is every time my husband Beauregard's mother came to visit, we had trouble. She had to have special things to eat, and I almost killed myself trying to please her. Well, Eve's mother has a 
I suppose you could call it a diet, but it's no trouble at all. Mm-hmm. No, really, Leela. I'll be sorry to see Eve's mother go. She's mighty good company. Lively, you know. Something going on every minute. Mm, Beauregard's mother used to talk every minute. He used to get awfully wearing. Uh, well, Eve's mother is different. She's well informed on the questions of the day. Good talker. Isn't she a good talker, Peavy? Yeah, she certainly is. <laughs> yes, sir, she's... Oh, hello, Floyd. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. How do, Mrs. Ransom? Good morning, Mr. Munson. Hi, Peavy. Still helping the doctors make business for the undertakers? Well, now, I... I, I resent that. Let's go. <laughs> well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I got your Pullman ticket. Oh, you have? Oh, that's fine. Uh... <clears throat> Yeah, that's fine, Floyd. How much do I... Yeah, I called your house as soon as I got the tickets, and they told me you were over here. Yeah, that's fine. How much do I... I could have waited at the shop, but I knew you were anxious to get a hold of those reservations, so I run right over. He's been calling me four or five times a day. Floyd! Well, I guess we all know how it is when a fellow's trying to get his mother-in-law out of town. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Hello, Throckmorton. My, what are all the packages? Oh, just a few little going-away things for your mother. Oh, how sweet. I'll call her. Oh, no, don't bother. She's probably busy packing. She is packing, isn't she? <laughs> She's all packed. She's resting for a little while. And... Oh, I won't disturb her. That's right. Nobody likes to be waked up in the middle of a little snooze, Eve. Uh, I was just going to leave these things, but if you're not doing anything, it might... Sit around for a minute. I wish you would, dear. <sighs> oh, look. Here's the Pullman ticket. Yeah, lower nine. Very comfortable, right in the middle of the car. Oh, that's wonderful. And with all these presents, Mother will be traveling in style. I'm having a croissant sent to her at the depot. Oh, Throckmorton, you're doing too much. Not the way I look at it, Eve. <laughs> now, sir, the best is none too good for my girl's mother. You're awfully sweet. So are you. <laughs> Will you still think I'm sweet when I'm Mayor Gildersleeve? Of course. Only then I'll say you're awfully sweet, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, George Eve. You're quite a girl. Eve, dear, is there someone with you? It's Throckmorton, Mother. Did we wake you up? Oh, no, I wasn't really asleep. Good afternoon, Throckmorton. Hello, Mother. I certainly didn't mean to disturb you. Uh, you didn't. Mother, I insist you must get a little rest. Uh, Throckmorton's brought you some awfully interesting-looking presents, though, and you ought to thank him. Oh, no thanks are necessary, Mother. Uh, Throckmorton, you certainly are thoughtful. Uh, should I open them now? No, Mother, not till you're on the train. Now, you go lie down for a little while and finish your nap. Yes, Mother. Train trips are quite tiring, you know. Oh, so thoughtful. Well, I'll see you before I leave, won't I, Throckmorton? Oh, yes, I'm taking you to the station. <laughs> of everything, doesn't he, dear? Well, I'll go and lie down for a little while, if you'll excuse me. Oh, go right ahead, Mother. There's nothing like a little shut-eye. <laughs> I think so, too. But don't you let me oversleep my train now. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> my George, she's a great old girl. I think she's the finest mother in the world. Yes, sir. Uh, Eve, <clears throat> have you thought about where we could go on our honeymoon? Honeymoon? Good gracious, Throckmorton, we haven't even set a date for our wedding. How about the 4th of July? Oh, <laughs> nobody gets married on the 4th of July, dear. Oh? Uh -huh. Besides, I don't think we ought to do any traveling with the war on. We could have a honeymoon right here. Well, maybe you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... Oh, excuse me. Uh, mm. Hello? Oh, yes, Judge, how are you? Hooker. That old goat is always butting in. Yes, Judge. Mother's going this evening. Oh, yes, I'm sure she'd like to speak to you. Just a minute. You're not going to waste your uh, wake your mother up just for hooker. Now, throughout, Morton, it's very nice of the judge to call to say goodbye. Eve, have you no regard for your mother's health? But, darling, I can't just... Oh, Eve, dear, did I hear the phone ring? Oh, yes, Mother, it's for you, Judge Hooker. Oh, thank you, dear. I was just dropping off to sleep. Hello. Well, it was awfully nice to meet you, Judge. I've heard so much about you. Oh, oh, thank you, Judge. I hope to be back again very soon. Why, that old... What's the matter, Throckmorton? Uh, nothing. Oh, nothing. Thank you again, Judge. Goodbye. 
Now, there's such friendly people here in Summerfield. Isn't Judge Hooker a fine man, Throckmorton? Oh, yeah, one of the finest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear, I wonder whether it's worthwhile trying to get back to sleep again. Dr. Farrow says sleep isn't everything, of course, but I read in a magazine the other day that June is a good month to sleep in. Uh, well, I'm sure Dr. Farrow would recommend a little uh, nap just before a train trip, Mother. I think a little rest will help, Mother. Well, I'll try. If you'll both be real quiet, maybe I can drop off again. Oh, we'll be too little. Little mice. Let's play mouse, Eve. How do you play mouse? Well, you're the little mouse, and I try to grab you. Oh. <laughs> Throckmorton, don't. Don't make any noise. You'll wake up, Mother. But you're taking unfair advantage. All's fair in love and war. <laughs> oh, for I try to talk very quietly. Hello? Oh, yes, this is she. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Who's that? It was a telegram from my brother Fred. Fred? He's all right, isn't he? Oh, yes, he's all right. He's just got a commission in the Seabees, and he's on his way to Washington. But your mother! She'll just have to live here, dear, with us. Sheeve! <laughs> I can't seem to get to sleep. It's all right, Mother. You might as well stay up now. Well, come in, come in. I'm uh, not disturbing you, I hope. Not at all. Come in. I could go away and come back at some more convenient time. I'm not doing a thing, Peavy. <laughs> Just sitting here reading a magazine. Come on in. Well, what's on your mind, Peavy? You're uh, sure I'm not yet? No, not at all. What's on your mind? Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, uh, you wouldn't want to buy a war bond, would you? You see, there's this big drive. Not if that's the way you're going to sell them. No, well, I didn't think you would. Yeah, wait a minute. I'm only trying to tell you that's no way to sell bonds. No? No. You come mooching in here. Ye gods, man, there's a war on. There is? Uh, I mean, yes. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I know. That that's why we're selling the bonds, the war. Well, that's no way to sell them. Well, how would you sell them, Mr. Gildersleeve? How would I sell them? I'd make people realize there's a war going on, that's how. I'd say to them, look here, brother... You've been hollering your head off for a second front. Well, now you got it. A lot of fellows are over there fighting and dying for what you've been hollering for. Well, let's see you back them up. And then I'd say to them, the time has come, brother, to put up or shut up. That's what i tell them. You would? Yes, sir. And I'd tell them more, Peavy. I'd say, look, this is the greatest chance in history. The greatest chance in history. Are you going to buy into it or are you going to pass it up? I'd tell them, you don't have to buy bonds. Nobody's going to make you. Nobody will know. Nobody will snitch on you if you don't. But you'll know, brother. You'll know that the one time when you could have done something to help, you didn't do it. And if we fail in this war, I wouldn't want to be you. And if we succeed, I wouldn't want to be you either. That's what I tell them. Do you really believe that, Mr. Gildersleeve? Why, certainly I believe it. You're darn right I believe it. Sign here. What? What do you mean? You bought yourself a bond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, certainly I'll buy one. I'm glad to do it. You, you just mark right there what kind you want. But I'll say this, Peavy. You're the worst bond salesman I ever saw. Yeah, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you just bought one. It's, yes, but I had to practically sell it to myself. Well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Peavy, you're a character. Coming from you, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'd say that was from headquarters. Huh? <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night, Peavy. Good night, everybody. And remember, will you? Buy that bond. Music on this program was directed by Claude Sweet. And this is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>